Welcome back. This is Mary. And if you've been following me on my Facebook page and my group, uh, you know that I've been covering the taxonomy of activity groups last couple of weeks, covering things like the thematic group, the task oriented group, as well as the topical group. Um, and I've been using mainly photos and memes to uh, explain these different groups. And today I wanted to cover the developmental group and thought I just need to make a video and talk about it because there's a lot to cover and I've received a lot of requests on this one in particular because there seems to be a lot of confusion uh, between some of the overlap and I know it's hard to retain for many of you so today I'm gonna talk about it not necessarily with visuals I don't have visuals today but I don't think we need it I want to tell you more about my life and stories in my life to help you really visualize and conceptualize this information and I want to encourage you to do the same thing by ascribing these group characters characteristics in the activities of your own life so you can really remember this content okay so developmental groups what is it for what purpose does it serve serve well it helps you to uh, improve your group interaction um, with others so skills to enhance your interactions in a group setting and there are five uh, going from least amount of group interaction required to a lot of group interaction so one parallel two project level three uh, egocentric and cooperative fourth one cooperative and finally ending with a mature group I'm going to start with the parallel and for me to understand this one I like to think of myself in a car room or at a casino playing poker because it happens to be one of my favorite occupations and I enjoy it very very much and I'll tell you guys about how much I enjoy poker how good I am at this game another time but the reason why this activity reminds me of the parallel group is because group interaction is not required Require for me to engage and perform in a particular task, which in this case is playing poker. So when I'm feeling antisocial or I don't necessarily want to hang out with friends and you know be social, but still want to be around other people, I like to go to the car room. And similarly, in a parallel group, you are simply there in the presence of other people doing your own thing, but maybe sharing tasks or tools or having similar activities which may encourage or facilitate group interaction. But in order for you to actually complete that task, you don't necessarily have to interact with somebody next to you. Uh, at this level, the role of the therapist is directive. They will select the activity, they will uh, provide the instructions, guidance, and provide lots of unconditional positive support and regard for the members. Okay, moving on to a project level. This is where uh, interaction is required for you to complete a task. So when I think of a book, of a project level, I literally think of a project that I had to do with a peer while I was in school. And many of you have uh, experienced this, where you walk into one of your OT classrooms and your professor says, okay, today we're gonna do um, an activity. I want you to partner up with somebody sitting next to you and complete blah, whatever it is, by the end of the class. So at a project level, you are doing a short-term activity that requires at least two or more people, so like a peer next to you, and the assignment is provided still by the therapist, so the therapist selects the activity, and group interaction or interaction with another person at this level is required to bring the completion task to completion so that's a project level okay we move on to egocentric dash cooperative level and this is finally at a point where you are not given a task but you choose the task along with several others uh, to complete. So group interaction is very much emphasized here. And when I think about this group, I think about something like 
preparing for the AOTA poster presentation. Uh, that is not something, the decision to do that and the topic that you choose for an AOTA presentation is not dictated by your professor. They don't select it and give it to you. Rather, you would find the group and members and colleagues and peers that you want to do it with. You will choose the content and topic that interests you, that you're passionate about, that you feel comfortable talking about maybe, and then you would come together as a group uh, and it's long term, uh, several times maybe a week for a long period of time to prepare this presentation, right? So I think of my experience uh, preparing for a long term project like this with other members, uh, and in this group it's five to ten members more so. And the role of the therapist in this case is more of a role model. So we in the project group, you had I used the example of a professor giving you the example or giving you the assignment at a egocentric cooperative. Uh, you, the therapist, or in this case the professor, would be more of a role model and you would look to them as guidance. You would look to them um, and see how they perform to use that as a guidance to how you should carry out your activity within the group setting. All right, now we move on to cooperative. And this is an important one because beyond just the group interaction uh, and beyond just the tasks, you begin to really think about uh, how you can be fulfilled emotionally in society. Uh, you're thinking about uh, what gives you a sense of fulfillment. And so in this group, I think about a meetup group that I created uh, a couple years ago, and actually it was last year, it's called Coffee, Wine, and Whiskey. And it incorporates three things that I enjoy very much. Coffee, which makes me extremely productive, and wine, which allows me to become creative and go into my element and do my own thing, and whiskey, which just emboldens me and allows me to do things that are intrepid. <laughs> and I created this meetup group and I decided to facilitate it in order for the members to come together and provide a safe space where we could uh, be creative, express our own thoughts and feelings. So a completion of the task at this level is secondary to emotional fulfillment, expression of thoughts and feelings and ideas. That's at a cooperative level. So this is one of my favorites because this is when you come together and sure, there is something that you need to do together. There might be a task and an activity, but really uh, the activity is there really to uh, propel, to encourage, and to elicit uh, sharing of ideas and thoughts. I love it. Coffee, wine, and whiskey meetup group. So that's what I think about when I think about the cooperative level. At this level, the role of the therapist, remember previously was a role model, at a cooperative level, uh, they're more of an advisor. Okay, so therapist is acting as an advisor. Finally, we're at a mature group. And when I think about this group, I like to think of my role in the golf committee in a rotary club that I'm in. And so uh, this is where you begin to fulfill your function, your role in society, maybe contribute to society in some way to feel a sense of competence, feel a sense of giving back to the community. You're fulfilling your sense of uh, belongingness and need in this society. And so at this level, both the completion of the project as well as group interaction is equally important. And um, the role of the therapist at this level will be more of a peer. Okay, so if we just go back in terms of role of the therapist, just so we remember, uh, we started at parallel with the role of the therapist being very directive uh, to project. They're still directive, giving you assignments, but less than the parallel or parallel group to uh, egocentric cooperative, which they were simply being a role model to an advisor, and then we ended up with just a peer. Right? So this is how I like to think about the developmental groups. I think about examples from my own life and um, ascribe these group characteristics in a way that makes sense for me. All right? 
that's it for today and if you haven't already be sure to uh, like my Facebook page and follow me on my group uh, both of those which cover not only MBCOT related content but things related to occupational therapy beyond the textbook okay I hope you guys have a great rest of the week and I'll see you guys again very soon bye